In this lesson, we are going to examine exponential functions. Look at their graphs and talk a little bit about how we can transform exponential functions and what some of the features of their graphs are. So, what is an exponential function? An exponential function will be of the form f of x equals b to the power of x. Okay, so we call this, this is our exponential function. Okay, so b we call the base of the function. And b is going to be some number that's greater than zero and is not equal to one. So b can't be one and b does have to be greater than zero. So what does an exponential function look like when we graph it? Let's look at an example, okay? So if we have the exponential function y equals b of x, y equals b to the power of x. We're going to have, so when we have some base here generally, okay, this is our basic exponential function. The thing that's a little bit more challenging about this than the other functions is we have this number b, which is yet another variable. It could change as opposed to our other functions that we've transformed where we have just an x and y. But all exponential functions generally have something in common. So this function that we're going to look at, we're going to look at b greater than one. So some number b that's bigger than one. So it's going to come from the left and it's going to come up like this. Okay. So what we have here, it's like in our last unit, we have a horizontal asymptote at y equals zero. We always intersect this point at, sorry, not one, zero, zero, comma one. And the reason is that any number to the zero power is equal to one, okay? So we have a horizontal asymptote at y equals zero as x goes to minus infinity. We have our zero one point. And then we are going to have a point at one comma b. So our first function, because b to the power of one is always going to be the same as b. Then the next point would be two comma b squared, three comma b to the third, etc. Okay, so this is what our exponential function looks like. And as with any function, you may want to just plug in some points. And generally, if you have exponential functions with a b that's bigger than one, that's not a fraction, you're gonna have your point getting closer and closer to zero as you hit, head towards negative infinity and just taking off and getting really, really big on the other side of zero. So exponential functions can be transformed. So just like with any of our, our other functions. So we looked at where b was bigger than one, where we have a number that's not a fraction. A small note for your transformations is there's another way to do a reflection over the y-axis, okay? So if you have b between zero and one, um, will also, this will also result in a reflection over the y-axis. Why? Well, because if we have b to the power, if you think of b to the negative x, that's the same as one over b to the power of x. So essentially having a fraction or a reciprocal of some number is gonna do the same thing as reflecting over the y-axis. So that is gonna be the case for all b greater than one. So if you have like, you can think of making it a fraction as the same thing as doing a reflection over that y-axis. Okay, so let's take a look at how we might graph a transformed function. So just like with other 
functions. We have y equals a. We generally do not have horizontal transformations, um, expansions or compressions of these exponential functions because it's too difficult to write that in. So generally you ha will have a vertical stretch or stretch um, compression and or a reflection over x-axis, depending on whether A is positive or negative. So again, we're following the same rules for transformations that we had. Okay, so we have our B. B is just our, in this case, B is just our base of the exponent, and that's going to be some constant. We're going to have to the power of x minus c, okay? If there is a negative out front, that is going to give us a reflection over the y-axis as well. Our c, as with before, is our horizontal translation. Okay, so b to the x minus c, and then we have our plus d, which is our vertical translation. And these work the same as they would with any other function. So we're really mostly going to be focusing on what happens with our translations. Um, generally, a stretch or compression, we don't, we don't see that quite as much with our exponential functions, but it does happen once in a while. So we're going to graph, so for our second example, let's graph a transformed exponential function, okay? So we're gonna graph y equals three to the x plus one minus two, okay? So we're going to try to graph this function here. So we can draw right here. Okay, so the first thing we're going to do is let's look at our important points. So on the basic function, what I like to do is generally when I'm transforming a function, I like to think about where the important points go first. So our base function, okay, we have y equals zero horizontal asymptote. So transformed, it's our vertical our vertical translation is the only thing that's actually going to affect where our horizontal asymptote. So we're going to go down two. Okay, so that means we're going to have an HA, a horizontal asymptote, at y equals minus two. So I can go ahead and I can draw that in. So I know that we're going to have this horizontal asymptote. Three is bigger than one. So that means it's not gonna be, unless I have a negative in the exponent, which I don't, there's not gonna be any reflections that are happening right now. So it's gonna be in the same direction. So no reflections. Okay. And now we also have that special point that's at zero comma one. That's going to be transformed. We have, we've moved it one left minus one and two down. So that's gonna to go to minus one minus two. And we have that one and our base here is three. So we have one three. It's gonna go one to the left and it's gonna go two down as well. So that's gonna be zero one. So I'm just gonna plot those points now. So now I have, sorry, that should be negative one comma negative one because one take away two is negative one. So we're gonna go right here and we're gonna go along our horizontal asymptote coming up. We know we hit the point negative one comma negative one. So I'm gonna make sure I get that point in there and we'll just put a few line markers so we can see where we're going. So that point negative one, negative one is really important. And then zero comma one is gonna be, so we're gonna go up, up, up one, sorry, up two over one from there. And that's going to be the next point. And so that gives me an asymptote and two points. And that's really enough for us to see exactly what this exponential function is doing. 
While we are on the topic of exponents, we do want to recall a few exponent rules. from previous courses. So if we have a to the x times a to the y, that's equal to a to the x plus y. So if you're multiplying two exponential expressions, you add the exponents. If we have a to the x divided by a to the y, that's equal to a to the x minus y. If we have a to the x to the power of y, that's equal to a to the x times y. If we have a to the power of negative n, that's equal 1 over a to the n. If we have a to the 1 over n, that is equal to the nth root of a. And if we have a to the m over n, that's equal to either the nth root of a to the m, which is also equal to the nth root of a to the power of m. So if you don't recall these, you might want to go back and take a quick peek into your pre-calc 11 and pre-calc 10 workbooks because those are all important exponent rules to remember when you're trying some problems.